Welcome back everybody to another TrueNAS Minecraft server tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about debugging a server that is either in a stack over overflow or looping. Um, going to try to demonstrate a few errors and how we can debug those errors through TrueNAS. Uh, we're going to be, I'm going to be using uh, a terminal. I've SSH'd into my TrueNAS. Um, you can enable that by, you know, just going to systems, services, and you just do SSH. Uh, I have it set automatically because I'm typically always in here. And when you do that, you're going to need to go to credentials and set and set all that up. But if you don't want to deal with setting up the SSH, other people already have tutorials on how to do that. In fact, that's what I did. Just go on YouTube, look it up. You'll find it. If not, you can follow along in the shell. It's the same thing. Um, this is the SSH client we're going to have open for debugging. So at the start, you should already have all your Minecraft uh, server files. I just downloaded, downloaded these directly from CurseForge. I don't even have a EULA in here or anything like that. So, you know, I have it set to this database right now. It's true now as Minecraft debugging. It's going to be a tutorial. Um, yeah, if you look up right now, I already have another Sky Factory 3 server running right here. This is what I use for my uh, current gameplay if you guys are following along and I have all the mods 9. Um, that's currently on a pause. I'll get that. I'll start playing that again for you guys if you enjoy that. Um, but yeah, anyways, let's get straight into debugging. So w at the start, what you're typically always going to do is you're just going to spin up a Java instance of TrueNAS. Uh, I'll walk this along with you guys. So typically we'll just name this um, Minecraft Sky Factory 3 Debug. Don't care about spelling errors right now. You're going to accept the EULA. Um, we're going to run this version of Java type. It's going to be, this is going to be, it's a curse forge. Hold up. Let me just pop open a new tab real quick. Uh, here it is. Sky Factory. We're just going to edit this. It's basically going to copy paste the settings. I'm just picking a different port right now because uh, I already have a server running. And if you have it running on the same port, then you're, you're going to run into some bugs. Uh, so right here, you always want to make sure you're set on host path, right? We're going to go into here, right? Here's where I have all my files. You can see it's the same files I showed you guys. So you're going to select this as your host path. And that's where the server is going to start on resources. We're just going to do eight CPUs just because I feel like it. We're going to give this 18 megabytes of RAM. And then also, like I said, you always want to head up here into the uh, environmental variables. So we're going to add two of these. We're going to add this one. And we're going to do this. And the CurseForge course, CurseForge version is going to be this. So pay attention to your value uh, of memory. Sometimes if you type that incorrectly, you will run into an error. For example, uh, looking at all the mods nine. Uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah. So hmm, interesting. I remember it being MB, but anyways, make sure it's the correct memory. And then after that, we should be able to just come here and hit install. And if I remember correctly, this shouldn't work. This sh should just loop the container. And we're going to debug that on why the container is just looping. So it's going to pull all the images. So if you've never used a terminal, it's a really useful tool for debugging. Um, it's, base, it's basically just base Docker uh, command lines. So for example, we can do Docker PS. We're going to sudo su. You want to enter in your admin password, same as your web interface. If you're doing that in the shell, you can just follow along. Um, here, I can just demo it for you guys. So basically, you know, you can ls, uh, and then same thing, sudo docker ps, drop in your admin password. And you can see all the containers currently running and their given port and everything. This is still pulling. Um, so once this is done pulling, then uh, we should see it spin up. 
um, if needed. I will fast forward if it takes a little bit too long to pull. All right, it looks like it's done pulling. So currently it's in a deployment phase. So let's see, we can do Docker PS. So we're looking for the right name. It's the one that just started 19 seconds ago, this one. So what we can do is we can do Docker attach. And this should put us directly in the container and we can see what's going on with it. Because when you do show logs, you won't really get anything. Uh, there it is, a mod pack UL for slug identifiers. Fill to auto install Curse Forge mod pack. So this is what I mean right by this is great. So if you attach to the running Docker container, you can see the errors. So for example, this is um, we're getting a failed to auto install Curse Forge mod pack. Um, so you can come back and go and go through your config and try to figure out why we're getting this error. going to load. Come on. Sometimes true NAS can be a little buggy. When you have a, a container that's looping or something, sometimes it does bug out your true NAS. Um, and uh, that sucks. But that lets me point out another great debugging tip for Minecraft servers or honestly just TrueNAS containers in general. So if you go to Docker PS, we can see our container right here uh, and that it's running. So we can come here, copy this, and we can do Docker inspect, and then we, we can inspect our container. So we're gonna get this printout of a whole bunch of information. What we're looking for is this right here. It's where the YAML is located. Uh, it's in the project files. You're gonna be looking for this one. Sometimes it might, you know, square you in the wrong place and you can see it right there. Also, you can see a complete set of all the environmental variables, even the default ones that you don't have set. You can see it all, you can see it all right here. So what we can do is we can do, we can CD where to where our compose is located cd directory oh that's not a directory so cd to our renders and then we can ls so now so this is yeah right here just crashed it just stopped so this is looping or something so we can do since we're here is you know we just see that it's not running it was deploying then it just crashed so what we can do is we can do docker compose up and, it, and all of this is still while i'm on the on the pseudo user if you're not sudo, you're gonna wanna su docker compose up and it's gonna up this compose file up here that you can see right here. So if we do enter, we can see that it's recreating the container and this allows us to just in depth see what the, what's going on in the background so we can debug it and figure out the issue. So I'll probably fast forward this for you guys. Don't know how long it's gonna take. Okay, right here. So we see that we got the image, a mod, a mod pack page or URL or slug identifier is required. Init error failed auto install curse forge mod pack. And we see right here that we're stuck in a loop and this is looping us. So we probably want to see why this is happening. Uh, I, I actually don't remember running into this so we can see why that's happening. Uh, problem. This is curse forge. I'm just running Forge. So little things like that can catch you off guard. As you can see, I just fell for one. Um, so if we come here, we're just gonna show up here. We're gonna change that to Forge. So once you're there, you can update. Once you've updated this, it's gonna do all of this. And if you look in your render, your Docker compose file is gonna disappear. So once that's gone, you just CD dot dot which, which is going to take you up a directory a directory and you're going to cd into your render and then same thing 
Docker. Oh man, I cannot spell. Docker compose up. So it's going to recreate the container and let's see if this goes away now after it's done recreating and running. And we'll see if we get any other errors that we can debug. All right, looks like we're running pretty well. Right, so looks like we've just cleared that error. We just had the wrong thing selected. So instead of curse forge, we were we needed for a uh, forge. Um, so I will fast forward uh, if this doesn't finish launching and has any more errors. But if it launches, then I guess that will be the end of this video. And that should help you guys troubleshoot any errors that you're having with your Minecraft installation. So right here, it's just saying that Forge version is already installed, which is good. But it looks like we're getting an exit code. So right here, it looks like we're already looping, actually. So one loop, another loop, and looks like it's just going to loop. So typically, you can just Google this and try to figure out what's the problem. But since I already dealt with this one, I can tell you guys that the issue for this one right here is that we're running a version of Java that is just a little bit too new for it to like. So if you look at um, if you look at this versus versus the mod versus the one that I have running up, if I load, I know. Let me bring that up. Okay, so right here. So current image of Java we're running, Java 21 Ubuntu. Current image that I found that works for Sky Factory 3, Java 8. So if we decide to bring this down to, to Java 8, uh, in the Debian. I don't know, we're in the, or the Oracle. Okay, we'll update this. All right, so since we've updated that, ls, cd up, and then we're going to have our same files, cd back into render, ls, and then we're just going to docker compose up again. All right, and since I have already pulled this image, it's, it's going to be way faster for me. Um, if you haven't, then this might take a little bit of a while. But this is what TrueNAS does in the background that you don't get to ever see unless you're running this console. And everything you do in the console does affect your system. So don't just go around running random commands that you're not that you're not sure what they're run, well, what you're doing, because that could really have a negative impact on your on your TrueNAS system. So I will fast forward for this to finish downloading. So now it's just recreated the container. Looks like we're running good. Okay, we're getting farther now. So the process of debugging is that you're just going to see what works and see what doesn't work. And I think this should work. Not sure if you guys can hear it, but um, my TrueNAS is spinning up a little bit. Uh, uh, the server is just one world. But if you do run out of memory, typically I'll, I'll let you know. I'll be like low on memory or something like that you know or if you like or if if it's the wrong version of java typically you'll get a stack overflow and just all you need to do is just copy your logs paste the portion of it into google and somebody else should have run into this issue and it should direct you on what you should need to do to get this fixed um i think that's gonna be the end of the, the tutorial if you like the video hit the like button if this helped out Make sure you says, make sure you smash that like. Uh, subscribe if you feel the need to. I know it's just a tutorial. Comment down below if you have any questions. I'm always here to answer any questions. Um, yeah, and that's it. Um, and always thank you very much for tuning in. And I hope this helped you out a lot.